So today I'm going to show you how I make my melanin spectrum dolls. And this is kind of filed under activism and art and hair and education and all of the things that I do because yeah, it's a di design that I created. There's also a, a little bit of activism included and education in the fact that there's inclusion and representation both in the full set of dolls. And then there are um, some natural hair textures as well as five different skin tones. So I make female dolls, male dolls, and non-binary dolls, basically kind of like a mixed set. Um, and you can also buy just a set of three. And um, in addition to that, you can also purchase just a custom doll, just a single doll. So that's what I'm gonna be making today. And for the single dolls, people just select one of the five um, skin tones and then a hair color, a hair length, and a outfit color and button color. So today I'm gonna be doing um, color number two for skin tone and um, using a light blue dress and yellow buttons and the reddish brown hair. So I'd start with a gingerbread pattern. It's called a gingerbread pattern just because it's kind of the outline of the human body. And it's sort of child proportions of the body. What you wanna do is um, cut out two pieces of felt from, with that pattern and I use a really nice dense felt that's nice and durable, but that also means like any kind of felt fabric is gonna be somewhat porous. So you wanna make sure that your um, knot on your thread is really uh, durable. So in other words, tie that knot at least three times or so over top of each other so that it's a nice full knot so that that thread is gonna um, not slip out when you start your sewing. So then I'm just going to put the needle through the um, back side and pull it around and through to the front. In other words, I'm kind of wrapping the thread around the edge of those two pieces of felt. And I have one large straight pin just kind of holding those two pieces together so that they don't slip while I'm sewing. And um, so you're gonna kind of, it's called a whip stitch. So you kind of, this is it, how it looks close up. You kind of just um, fold that thread around the edge, poke it through the back towards the front and pull, and then repeat. So keep doing that. Um, and you're gonna do that all the way around. I always start sewing under the kind of the armpit area and um, then go all the way around the doll. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit for you. So you're just gonna sew all the way around that first arm, around the head, second arm, first leg, second leg, and then you're gonna come up to about just the top of the leg. So there's about a three quarters of an inch or an inch gap that's just left open. You don't wanna sew that shut. You wanna kind of leave that open so that you can stuff the doll with the polyfill. So you're gonna just keep sewing and get all the way around to where you started. So this is what that little gap looks like um, in, right here. That's the opening that you're gonna actually put the polyfill in. So I take my polyfill and I'm also gonna use a little pencil. So I just have kind of like a, um, number two pencil that I'm that is going to help me stuff that in through some of the na more narrow areas. So as I stuff that polyfill in with the, in, not with the front of the pencil, just with the eraser and I'm going to use just to kind of push that up through there, um, through the neck area, it actually takes quite a bit of polyfill because you want to stuff these really nice and tight. You want them to be very full so that they make a nice doll, um, kind of a nice plush feel. You don't want them to be, um, you know, kind of like empty-ish or whatever because it just doesn't feel as satisfying to hold. So I'm pushing a lot of the, the polyfill up through the neck area into the head to get the head nice and full. 
And after that, I'm going to um, fill the left arm and then the left leg and then the right leg and then the right arm and then the belly last because that's really close to that opening. So I'm going to um, save that for last. So just one little note to you want to make sure that your thread matches the felt, of course. Um, I have, of course, five different colors of thread for the five different skin tones. And then also um, for the hair, it's really important when you get to sewing on the hair that your thread matches the hair color as well. So we're going to just keep stuffing. That's kind of what the arm looks like and the head once it's nice and stuffed. And um, you're going to just keep working that in with the end of the pencil. And these are actually, so in the full set of five dolls, it's $100 for five, which means they're $20 a piece. And for the set of three or just the custom doll, they're $25 each. And you'll, you'll kind of see, hopefully, after watching this video, um, why it's worth probably a lot more than that in terms of time and everything. But um, I, I try and keep these dolls reasonably priced just because I know that, um, you know, it's a small item for a child and I want them to be accessible. That's kind of the idea is for kids to have them. So... Again, I'm just get, just going to keep getting the polyfill and putting it through that little side slit. And I still have my needle and thread left, like it's still in the side. So the thread, um, I have enough thread left to sew, finish sewing up that slit once it's fully stuffed. So you can kind of see the thread with the needle on it dangling off to the side because... Um, I like to, I don't like to have a knot on both sides of that slit. I like to have one side all the way just sewn up with a steady thread. So I'm going to continue to just fill this up all the way and then sew that slit shut. Meanwhile, of course, um, Langston needs some help. <laughs> so this is kind of what it looks like when I get done filling it um, and we start to sew the slit sh shut so sorry that Langston just being very vocal the whole time I do this description but don't mind him he's he's happy he's just making noise um, so anyway I'm just going to continue to sew and just push that filling in the polyfill will kind of start to um, overflow a little bit which is good like you want some of that because you want it to be nice and full so just kind of poke it back into the doll with your pencil and then um, keep sewing all the way to the top of that slit and when you get to the top you're going to tie a really nice fortified knot um, Again, a knot that's done at least a few times over itself so that it's, that thread is not going to slip out because there's quite a bit of tension on the thread around that little opening. And then you're going to poke the needle from the knot area um, through into the back and just kind of pull it all the way through and then clip the end of the thread off and your doll is done so the body is nice and sewn and stuffed and that is how i make the basic form for these dolls and they are very flexible but also nice and kind of chubby <laughs> um, you want that stuffing again to be nice and thick so that they're kind of springy when you squish them so um i'm now going to get ready to sew the dress for the doll the little outfit so to do the dress i just fold a piece of felt i actually use just felt for all of this um so that it's nice and soft for younger kids to feel and play with 
and it just texturally kind of goes together. So I have a little dress pattern and I kind of fold the felt over at what would be the shoulder area. So I just cut around the dress and then cut out the neck. And I have three straight pins in this, two on the shoulders and one at the bottom of the dress. So I'll take those little pins out and show you how the dress is just one piece. So it just opens up, that's the, the top of it. So it will slide right over the doll's head. And you can also, I also have a little pattern that I make the little overall shorts for the like boy figures um, for those dolls. But so this is kind of the little dress. Um, I'm just gonna sew up the sides and also do a nice little quilting stitch to kind of make a um, little hem along the bottom of the dress as well as around the arms and around the neck just to kind of give a little bit of design to it. So this is how it looks before I sew. And it's the same with this, this process. You still want to, because it's felt, it's the same fabric, you still want your knot to be very um, fortified. So tie that knot several times and then pull it through. So I'm just gonna continue to sew this. What I do is I start by sewing up one side and then around that arm and uh, knot it. And then I go on this side, you can see I'm doing just the bottom. So I start on one side of the hem and go all the way around the hem to the, back to the other side and then sew up that second side. So for the hem stitch, it goes quicker than the body, body part or the sides of the dress because you can kind of, it's just one piece of felt that you're just moving your needle through. So you can kind of do several stitches and then pull the thread. You just want your stitches to be nice and even so that, you know, it looks kind of decorative around the bottom of the dress. So that's all the way around that hem. You can kind of see how the stitches are nice and even. And then I'm gonna do around the other side and then sew those two sides together at, at the bottom and then sew up the side and around the little arm. So as you're doing this, you kind of also, just a side note, you wanna start with a long enough thread to last the duration of what you're doing because you don't wanna knot in the middle of, say like the bottom of the hem or you know, an awkward place. So you always wanna keep your knots invisible because they do need to be a, subs you know, a substantial size of a knot. So you want them, you wanna kinda of hide them under the fabric in discreet places. So you don't want them to be where you can see them. So this is where I just kinda of join the hem and pull that thread through to start sewing up that second side. Of course, Langston, wants to go outside. So <laughs> my whole entire process of everything that I do is always constantly interrupted. Um, and this is just motherhood. That's just life. But you can kind of see what I'm doing is I'm pushing the needle through um, one side and then push pushing it back through from the other side. So this is a different stitch than the whip stitch that I used for the body because it just looks kind of more decorative and nicer for the clothing to do it this way instead of doing a whip stitch around the clothing because then it kind of makes it um, balloon out a little bit as opposed to lay flat. So I like the sides to kind of lay flat around the figure. So that's why I do this kind of a um, blanket stitch or quilting stitch. So it's just, in through from one side, pull out the back, and then from the back forward, pull out the front and keep going. When you get to the armpit, you're gonna wanna kinda lift up that little arm, and you're making sure this whole time that you don't sew the dress onto the doll because this dress can be removed. Basically, you can just lift up the little um, arms and pull the dress right up over the doll's head. 
so that if the child wants to change the clothing at any point, then that can definitely be done um, just by taking this little dress off and maybe putting on some clothes that were made for a similar size doll or just little ribbons or other things that maybe the, the kid even wants to try and make some little clothes or something. So um, this is going to be a removable dress. And you can kind of see when I get to that last part, I'm going to make, again, a nice little knot and um, pull it. I actually, after making this knot, I push the needle down right next to the knot and then down the side of the dress um, just so that it kind of again hides the ends of the thread. So, and I just do that, that same little single stitch. What I was showing you with lifting up the fabric there is that it's not attached to the doll that I'm gonna do that kind of just um, blanket stitch around the, the arm um, so that it, and, and you don't necessarily want it to gather too much, but just so that it makes a nice little border and then you're done. So knot it, pull your thread down through the side of the dress inside and then um, snip it off. And you can see that these are just really soft dolls. I think that for younger kids, especially like Langston's age, he's three, but even when he was two, I made him his first set of these dolls. I made him a little boy set of dolls and he just loves the texture, like the softness of the felt. It just feels really kind of comforting and nurturing to snuggle with something like this versus a hard doll. Um, so next I'm going to do the buttons and this customer chose yellow buttons on the light blue dress. So what I'm gonna do is actually sew those buttons on with yellow thread to match the buttons. You can just use the same color of thread as the dress if you want the stitching to be contrasting around the buttons, but I don't know. I just kind of like the buttons to look like they're sort of floating on the dress. So I'm gonna knot my yellow thread again, get a nice knot. And I'm gonna sew this up actually from within the dress. So kind of reach up inside the dress and push the needle out forward. Um, that's kind of what the knot looks like when it's been kind of doubled and tripled down. So I'm gonna just kind of um, make a little pathway in there um, from the bottom and then from the neck down and put the needle in so I'm just kind of holding that dress apart from the doll to make sure that I don't sew the dress or the buttons onto the doll, but just onto the dress. So the buttons can also be sewn on before you actually sew the dress um, around the edges. And some people might find that easier to do. Either way works. It's not a, really a big deal. Um, I just kind of like to do it in step-by-step -step format, especially for a little tutorial here. So what I'm going to do is pull this, the string up on one side and then through that button hole. And this is a four hole button. So I then sew across the top into the second hole, pull it down and kind of, you want to make sure that you're pulling it back up about where the next hole is going to be placed. So you're gonna come up, not right where you sewed the first two holes, but actually at the base where the next two holes are gonna be, if that makes sense. And then you're just gonna sew these buttons on. I actually do three buttons. I have kind of an assortment of buttons. So every single doll is different, not only in just the fact that it's hand sewn, but the buttons are slightly different. The face is always going to be kind of unique. Um, so there are no two dolls that are exactly the same. And I also do a custom box design so that each doll in their little box has a name. And I have kind of some basic names that you can see on my website. 
racheldolezal.com, when you kind of look under the shop tab and find the melanin spectrum dolls, you can kind of see that I have named each of these five dolls, but you can also, if you do the custom doll, you can just request a custom name as well. So for example, if you are doing a doll for ordering a doll for your uh, granddaughter or something, you might want to just have her name as the doll's name and then customize the doll to look like her. Or um, if you want to say do two dolls that look like best friends or sisters or cousins or whatever. And really the whole idea of the melanin spectrum dolls was and is to promote not just representation, like get the doll that looks like you, but inclusion as well, because a lot of families and friend groups span the spectrum of skin tone. So from super light or white to super dark or black. And there's um, always a range of people in our lives. So in the case of Langston, actually, when I made him his first little set, I didn't, I didn't even think of, oh, I'm going to make these to market. I actually just made him a little set because he has you know two older brothers who each have a different hair texture and skin tone, like all three of my sons are different skin tones, different hair textures, but they're brothers 100%. And I wanted him to know that, you know, he can love and play with figures and toys and dolls that look like him, but he can also love and play with uh, figures and toys that look like his brothers. And his role models don't have to all look exactly like him, like some of his role models might be um, you know, darker than him or lighter or whatever, but like just kind of the idea of inclusion and the idea that families have this range. So a lot of times, you know, it's not, it's not uncommon for siblings to have that range of skin tones. So what I'm showing you right now is just that I, um, finish the buttons and then I'm going to tie that last knot inside. So you can see those buttons are sewn on really well. Everything has to be very sturdy for these dolls because they're going to be played with and I want them to be played with and I want to make sure that they don't um, fall apart. You know, they're not too fragile. So these are the colors of thread that I've used so far, the yellow, the teal, and the um, skin tone. And then I'm also going to do a little bit of a bracelet. So I use these little glass beads, these little seed beads for just the bracelet. And if you ever don't want the bracelet, you can always just tell me like, I don't want the bracelet because I think my kid is going to chew it off or something. Also, if you get the doll and you want to take the bracelet off, you can just cut the, the thread and, you know, take the beads off. It's pretty easy to remove, but I think it adds a nice little touch and a lot of girls find um, that little bling kind of appealing, especially since these are child dolls. They're not, they're, they're not made to look like they have a bunch of makeup and everything on. So I kind of want them to stay cute and young looking, but a little bracelet kind of just adds that sparkle factor to the felt. So this is kind of how I am doing the face. So I did the, the, I sewed the two eyes on. They're just little button eyes, little tiny black buttons um, that I sew on for the eyes. And then I use embroidery floss. I actually take embroidery floss and just take one little strand out of it and thread it through a needle and fold it over so that it's double. And then I do the... Um, met the little nose in a contrasting brown and then do the mouth in kind of a mauve or a contrasting kind of pink. So that's the little nose and the eyes. And then I make sure to hide the threads of the embroidery floss kind of off to the side. So they'll all be covered up. All those knots and everything will be covered up with the hair when I sew the hair on a little bit later. So I just do the 
nose and then the mouth. And I just do kind of um, like a forward and back stitch. So kind of like do one stitch and then um, do a stitch in reverse and then do a stitch forward so that the stitches connect so that there's not a gap between the stitches. So this is kind of how I take the embroidery floss and just break it down to one string. And then I'm gonna thread that through the needle and fold it back. And this is going to be the mouth color. So it's just kind of a nice, soft, um, natural looking pink color. And I'm just gonna go in through, again, the side of the head area and make sure to anchor that thread really well. And then go and do the forward and then reverse and then forward and reverse stitching method for, it's kind of an embroidery method, embroidery stitch, just to create the look of the mouth, similar to how I did for the nose. And every mouth and nose turns out different. I don't know, like I haven't, I don't draw them on or anything like that. I just kind of um, freestyle it. So every little doll has its own kind of little personality and little facial structure. So with this one, I'm also going to just add a touch of um, cosmetic. So I have like a, a nice um, kind of bronzy blush um, just kind of blush powder for face, um, just regular makeup. So it's of course non-toxic and everything. And I'm just going to put a little bit of that on the cheeks, kind of right above the embroidered smile, just to add a little touch of color. It's just very subtle, but you'll see that in the finished doll. So I'm just going to continue to sew the mouth. And then last but not least, um, we are going to do the hair. So this is what she looks like when she's done. Basically, you know, everything but the hair. So the little bracelet is on and the eyes, nose, mouth, the outfit, the buttons. So we're just gonna get ready to do the hair. And for the hair, I use the same grade of hair that I actually use for um, clients, you know, or for myself or whatever, for braiding. I always use braiding hair, weaving hair, or crochet hair, basically, so that it's always safe and enjoyable to feel. So this is the hair that I'm gonna be using for the doll, and I'm just gonna start by um, anchoring some of that hair on the side. So I start kind of where it would be like below the ear, just kind of at the top of the neck, and um, just start anchoring the pieces of hair and doing that all the way around the, the head until it fills out nice and full. So once you get the hair all sewn on, you can just kind of style it by just um, manipulating it into sort of a shape, a style, and then you wanna cut or trim the bottom or the tips just to make sure that nothing is tangled. So you can kind of just keep trimming and making sure you just kind of run your fingernails through the hair, make sure that everything is nice and detangled and kind of pleasing to the touch and to the eye as far as the style goes. The hair is not sewn all the way across the back of the head because that would just, that would create just a lot of hair. Um, I like it to be just proportionate to kind of the way that the doll is made overall. So you can also request different lengths of hair. I can do like shoulder length or shorter. And for some of the non-binary sets or the boy sets, I do like, you know, some shorter hair too for those. Um, just depends on kind of what you're looking for as far as a look and the, maybe the age of the child. Sometimes people don't want too long of hair if their kid has shorter hair or something. So, um, you can kind of see how I'm just trimming and 
um, styling and then she's done so this is how the doll looks all finished from head to toe and again there are five different complexions and the hair can be done in different ways with like ponytails or just a you know kind of cropped and more out as a fro or something um i work with natural hair as a hairdresser so i work with natural hair in terms of curly or textured hair for these dolls too so i hope you enjoyed this video and again if you want to check out my melanin spectrum dolls just go to racheldollajall.com and you can get one or a set of three or a set of five there and i'd be happy to send send those out so it takes about a week to to create a whole set um, in a few days to just kind of fit fit in a custom doll to my schedule so i hope you enjoyed the video and maybe you want to instead of ordering one you want to try and make your own which is fine too so have fun and make sure that your kids always have representation as well as inclusion incorporated into their playtime and their toys.